Hello everyone and welcome to this task. In this task, we are going to understand the use case for Pydantic library and why do we even use it? Okay, so let's go ahead and cover Pydantic 101. So Pydantic is a Python library that is used to validate and parse data using Python type hints. So what we have done before is we have been able to call OpenAI API get feedback or get output out of it and we had to include in our prompt our output indicator if you remember which basically indicates what would the output look like what we wanted to do here instead is we are going to use pydentic to clearly specify what the output should look like for example i'm looking for an let's say a prediction let's say an age, for example, prediction out of the uh, OpenAI API, and the age should be in a floating point data type. So now I am actually clearly specifying what the data type would look like, what the output structure would look like, and what I could do as well with Pydantic is I can even raise an error message if, for example, the output that has been generated does not match my requirements. I can also change it as well from one data type to the other. I'm going to show you as well a ton of examples coming up next. So why? Okay, well, we use Pydantic to ensure that the data you get is clean, well-structured, and follows the rules you set. So how it works? First, you need to define a data structure using a class. I'm going to show you what, that, what do I mean by that. So the idea is I'm going to go ahead and I wanted to show exactly what the output data structure would look like. What am I expecting basically from, let's say, OpenAI API, for example. What Pydantic is going to do is going to ensure that the data is correct. So when it comes to the type, when it comes to the required fields and so on. And what it could do as well, it can actually help you convert data automatically if possible as well. So for example, it could turn strings into numbers or dates. Okay, of course, this is the uh, logo for, um, for Pydantic. Okay, and what I'm gonna do next is, let's actually go ahead and show you a quick example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and say clear outputs from all cells, and let's go ahead and run our first example. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to install Pydantic. So I'm going to say pip install Pydantic. And of course, there is an exclamation mark here initially if you don't have it. And then I'm going to say from Pydantic, import base model. Okay, what do you even mean by base model? Well, base model is the core class that we're going to use to create our data models. When I say data models, basically I'm going to say, okay, I'm expecting, let's say, this function to return the name and the name of, let's say, a customer is going to be in a string data type. I'm expecting age, and that age could be, let's say, an integer data type. I'm expecting, let's say, their email, and their email is going to be in a string or str data type. And if you're not familiar with strings, simply a string is a series of characters. So base model is simply a blueprint for structured data. It defines all the fields, it defines their types, and it can also automatically gives you data validation and type conversion capabilities as well. So let me show you a quick example. Of course, to run or execute the cell, all you need to do is to press Shift and Enter on your keyboard, and that is going to execute or run this cell for you. And because I have Pydantic already uh, installed before, that's why you got here Pydantic uh, requirement already satisfied. Okay. So what you do is first, as I mentioned, you imported the base model, right? What I could do right now is I can just simply define a class. So I can say class user, and I'm going to use the base model here that I imported before. And I'm going to specify exactly what the data structure would look like. So here, for example, I'm expecting a name and colon, and that is going to be a string data type. I'm expecting age, and that is going to be integer data type. And I'm expecting email, and that is going to be a string data type. Okay, so 
what we have done here is inside that class, we are going to declare the name, age, and email, along with their expected data types using Python, what we call it type hints. So that's what we call it type Python type hints, meaning I am basically giving hints about what data types to include in there as part of the output when I call this, um, let's say OpenAI API and so on. So Pydentic's role is to validate the name as a string, age as an integer, and so on. If you, let's say, for example, mess around, let's say, with this, and maybe instead of sending a name, for example, you decided to, let's say, send a, an integer value instead, what's going to happen here is Pydentic is going to raise an error. And let's go ahead and actually test it out. So if you press shift and enter, here we go. Now we had defined our new class, we called it user. Now let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna do, do two tests. First, I'm gonna test it with the correct or valid input. And the second, I'm going to test it with a wrong input. Let's go ahead and test it out. So now I could do, I can do the following. I can say user, which is what I defined here. I'm gonna specify name equals to, let's say Mira age equals to let's say 30 and email is going to be let's say mira at gmail.com something along those lines and that is going to be the user and if i go ahead and actually run this cell and if i say print user dot json here we go because here i actually met the requirements right so when i tested out here i okay i, I kind of obey the rules right so i said okay the name is actually a string which is defined by single or double quotation marks. The email here as well is defined by, sing by double quotation marks. And the age is actually an integer value. So this is great. So I met the requirements here. So everything worked and I did not get any error messages. And this is amazing. Now let's go ahead and test it out. But today I'm going to test it out with an invalid input. Let me show you. I'm going to say user name equal to Mira as well, similar to what we have done before. Age here, I'm going to list it as not a number. So here, instead of sending a um, an integer value, I specified a string, right? And this kind of miss, there is a mismatch here. So now if I go ahead and run it, and here we go. It's going to tell you, well, there is a one validation error for user. Input should be a valid integer, unable to parse string as an integer. It's going to tell you basically this is the issue here. Okay, and this is the idea of Pydentic. You can use it to perform output validation, input validation. You can also use it to convert from one data type to the other. And that will allow us, when we call OpenAI API, to specify exactly what the output would look like, kind of the structure of the output, and allow us to uh, improve the robustness of our apps, basically. And that's it. That's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we're going to have our first practice opportunity. Please stay tuned. Best of luck. And I'll see you in the next video.